However, this year, you guys, we have hit a roadblock with a Becca Arithmetic 4. I'm going to let you know this writing workshop will not continue with us for the next semester. Hi, you guys. My name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, I'm so excited about today's video because this is our mid-year homeschool curriculum update. So my daughter has worked so hard this year. I feel like she deserves a really serious pat on the back, a serious clap. Brie, if you ever go back and look at these videos, I just wanna let you know, mommy, I am so proud of you. You have worked so hard this semester. So you guys, um, if any of you are new here to my channel, again, I'm Brittany. I am a homeschooling mom to a 10, three and a one year old. We are in our second year of homeschooling. We are pandemic homeschoolers. <laughs> we actually started homeschooling due to the global pandemic. And now you guys, we are in this for the long run and I'm so excited for our journey. And I'm so happy to have been documenting our journey thus far. So. Let's go ahead and get on into all of the curriculum that we have used, what we are loving, what is staying, and what is going. <laughs> so um, I definitely can say our homeschooling style has evolved over the year, or over the past year that we have started homeschooling. So um, I'm just happy to see us finally settling into our groove and our rhythm and our homeschool. So you guys, I'm going to make sure I do my best to make sure I put chapters into this homeschool mid-year curriculum update because I already know um, I'm going to go through a lot of curriculum. And if you guys want to skip ahead and just maybe see math, language, art, science, etc., you will have the opportunity to do so. Hopefully this video is not too long, but I do want to give you guys as much details as I can because these videos, you guys, as a new homeschooling mom has been so helpful for for me when I've watched them. So I really hope that today's video can help any of you guys that are new, searching for curriculum, having problems with your curriculum, uh, to kind of just see how things have been going here in our household. So let's go ahead and get on into all of the curriculum. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our toughest subject in our homeschool. I know I'm not the only one, which is math. So we actually went through three different math curriculums this year. We landed on our top two. So that's the two that I'm going to share with you guys today. The first one is a Becca Arithmetic 4. We did a Becca Arithmetic 3 last year. My daughter loved it. She enjoyed it. However, this year, you guys, we have hit a roadblock with a Becca Arithmetic 4 just because this says four. I just want to let you guys know this book is primarily fifth grade math. Um, the concepts in a Becca, they do go really, really fast. Um, one thing I will say I love about Abeka is Abeka does have like a really good like arithmetic spiral where they will spiral back around those concepts. And I think that's why I enjoyed the third grade Abeka arithmetic so much because even though they introduced a new concept to her, the concept will be uh, reviewed over and over again through multiple lessons. So my daughter definitely does well with a spiral based curriculum. So this was meeting her needs um, last year. However, this year with the introduction of harder concepts and the math going so fast, I was finding that I had to start to slow this Abeka arithmetic down. So we did a good, like, I believe it was a good nine, 10 weeks straight of a Becca arithmetic. And we were trucking along, we were going good until we hit our first roadblock when it came to three by three digit multiplication. And uh, that was when I really had to reassess this curriculum and really slow this down for my daughter. So what I did was I went ahead and I printed off the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4. Now the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4, you guys, this curriculum is really, really good. I really like it. Um, I will say I do want to make another video, you guys, just giving you like a full in-depth view of this curriculum, my review, everything like that. But for the sake of this video and me trying to keep it short and sweet as possible, I went ahead and I wrote like a few notes down of some areas of this curriculum that we like and that we dislike. Okay, you guys, so here, right here in my phone, I have my um, initial pros and cons. We are actually on lesson 52 of this curriculum. So I feel like I'm pretty much at the halfway point of this curriculum. I'm past like the honeymoon phase of a new curriculum. So I think that I can give you guys a pretty 
pretty fair uh, opinion of this curriculum so far. So my pros are, I love that this uh, curriculum is independent. My daughter can get started on math without me. Now, as far as the Becca Arithmetic for my daughter, she does need me to get her started and then she's free. So this is kind of like just the reverse. She can get started on her own and then after when she finishes the video lesson, then she will sometimes need me for the new concept and then she's able to do the review and practice on her own. Another uh, pro that I have is that the lessons are short and simple. This curriculum is very strong in geometry, conceptual math, and mental math. My cons, however, that is that it's not enough arithmetic practice for the mastery of just the regular arithmetic skills. That's just my personal opinion. I found that when they were introducing a new concept, they would just have a few problems. And once they introduced that concept in unit one, the second unit, a concept that was introduced, wasn't introduced again. And I find that um, my daughter, she does need that additional um, spiral. She definitely needs that additional supplemental practice. And that's one thing I love about Abeka is that you have plenty of problems and you have plenty of review in the back. So if it is a concept, I am able to just stop and use the problems that they have in the back. However, the Simply Good and Beautiful map, it doesn't have that. You So you will be on a manhunt to find other resources in other areas where you can supplement and find supplemental worksheets to help you guys out on a particular concept. Another con that I have is that I found a few math errors in this book. I mean, I think no math curriculum is perfect. Even in some of these older edition math books, I definitely know you will find some type of errors in it. However, I have found a few errors within this uh, Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4. And also another con that I have of this is that um, I don't like the answer key. I really like how Abeka has the answer key where they show the solutions to the problems. In this answer key, it just gives you the answer. So if your child got the problem wrong, you then as a parent will have to solve out the answer uh, so you can see where exactly where they got it wrong and you don't have like that full solution. So that is one of my cons about this. I do have a lot more to say about this Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4. If you guys want me to make a separate video, I definitely will. Um, however, I will say that this math, it is actually working for my daughter. Um, I think no math curriculum and no curriculum in itself is perfect. And I think you really have to take the pros and the cons with it. But I will say putting these two curriculums together has been a good marry for my daughter. So right now we're doing four lessons of the Simply Good and Beautiful Math four and we're doing one lesson of the Abeka arithmetic four. Sometimes we will do three and two so it just depends. However I know by the end of the school year we will have this one this math curriculum finished and this math curriculum Abeka arithmetic four has 170 lessons. I looked at it and I just calculated it from where we are at. Uh, we probably will end off the school year in about a lesson 100 in this book. So um, my daughter is doing good. These two curriculums they work for her so I'm just going to stick with what works for her however next school year for fifth grade I'm not too sure how I really feel about the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4 if we will continue with five or not so um, I'm still kind of like up in the air with it but for right now it is working Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get into language arts. Now, language arts, you know, of course, it has like a plethora of categories, spelling, grammar, writing, all of the things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with our main grammar and composition, which has been Rod and Staff Building English Series, Building Christian's English Series. You guys, like my daughter, she absolutely loves this curriculum and I love it too. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. I really don't have many cons with this curriculum. The only con that I can think for someone else coming into this curriculum will be that um, you do have to get your kids started off with the lesson they can't just read this on their own and get started you will have to do like the oral drill kind of get them set up and then there they will be independent after that however I am finding that um, for me, as far as my instruction time, it's really, uh, it really varies. It's between like eight 
10 minutes has been the longest I've spent on a unit with my daughter or on a lesson with my daughter before she is off on her own. But for the most part, I would say it's really between six to eight minutes of my parent time before she's independent. I love how simple the instructions are. Um, I love the oral drills in the beginning. It really gets her brain thinking and it really has a good way of bringing in those concepts from previous chapters and bringing them into the new lesson. I really will say that this uh, grammar curriculum is very thorough. Um, it is, it's really strong. This is like a, a older Mennonite English curriculum. So you will have like older terms and different things like that. It's really simple, it's black and white. It's no fancy frills. However, just the, the way that the text is written is really simple and my daughter, she really loves these English lessons. So Rod and Staff, I think honestly you guys, this curriculum is probably here to stay for the long run because that's how much my daughter loves it. So uh, Rod and Staff, it has been amazing for us. Now, as far as spelling, you guys, we went ahead and we did Evan Moore's Building Spelling. Um, this spelling skills has been amazing. I love the fact that it has like the uh, spelling dictation. It has the word study. It has like crossword puzzle. It has activities and um, it's really, really simple and easy. My daughter is able to get done spelling in like 10 minutes top. I will say my daughter, she actually completed this whole uh, book this semester. So this is the spelling grade four. I do have the next level up however because my daughter is really really strong in spelling I decided to uh, finish to to not do any more spelling for this uh, remaining school year and to go ahead and pull out our new wordly wise so we will be starting wordly wise how I think I'm going to use this wordly wise is going to be kind of like a vocabulary and spelling so the vocabulary words she has for the week I will turn those into a spelling list and like test her on the words how to spell them and their meaning at the end of the week so um, this is going to replace this right here for this semester I haven't uh, tried wrote wordly wise just yet so this is going to be our first time trying it i heard good things about it so hopefully we will enjoy it as well it looks simple and uh, to the point so i think my daughter is going to like it but as far as our review on evan moore's building spelling we are going to continue with the spelling series until we level out it has been amazing so as far as reading comprehension, you guys, we use these reading tests from Scholastics for reading comprehension. It has uh, the reading comprehension part. It has a portion where it has vocabulary for synonyms and antonyms. And um, this uh, reading comprehension skills has really been amazing for my daughter. I've noticed her skills as far as reading comprehension get better and better as she has gone through the test. We actually work on these tests on Friday. She does one test a week and we are actually done with this grade level four. This booklet has 15 tests in it. So of course uh, we, <laughs> we finished them all this first semester. So for second semester, I went ahead and I purchased the next set, which is the written test grade five. So she's gonna go ahead and start this one off in January. So I'm so excited for us to continue with these reading comprehension. If you guys need a short, simple reading comprehension, straight to the point paragraphs, multiple choice questions, this simple workbook is really, really for you. This book is only like $3.99, so it's definitely worth the money. My daughter loves it. It's simple, it's to the point, and no complaints about this. I feel like it's getting the job done. Now, as far as handwriting, you guys, we continued with handwriting without tears. We did handwriting without tears uh, cursive last year. So this is the second part of their cursive book, which is the cursive success. My daughter loves it. One thing I will say that she does, or she told me that she did enjoy about the handwriting without tears is that she likes how it actually gives them the full instructions on how to create the cursive and the writing. Um, she really enjoys that. My daughter, she's still working on mastering her cursive. However, I have seen such big improvement with her cursive handwriting this school year. So we didn't do this as faithfully as we did last school year. However, this semester, I told my daughter, we are going to pull this bad boy out and we're going to get more consistent with it. So uh, handwriting without tears, it's been amazing. No tears. So yeah. Now, as far as writing goes for my daughter, if you guys are not new here to my channel, you already know writing is my daughter's 
favorite subject for writing what we started off doing was I gave my daughter this plain composition notebook and I just allow her to go ahead and just write anything short stories poetry whatever she is feeling for that day I give her free reigns as far as writing and from here um, I really have found that it has given and allowed my daughter to create that stamina when it came with when it comes to her writing um, she just has a really natural knack for it um, one thing I will say is that I was really looking for some more type of I guess formal instruction when it came to writing for my daughter um, just because uh, I did like her doing like her daily journal and doing things like that but I felt like she needed something else so you guys I went ahead and I printed off the writing workshop from the good and the beautiful level four and she did this writing workshop she did all the way up until let's see We made it to lesson 37 in this writing workshop. And you guys, I am going to let you know this writing workshop will not continue with us for the next semester. And it's actually not anything wrong with this writing workshop while we're not gonna continue it. This writing workshop, you guys, is really amazing. If, even if you have like a reluctant writer, I really feel like the way that the writing workshop gives the instructions, it's really, really great. Uh, it really gets your kids thinking and it really just gives them that confidence and that stamina to start writing words on uh, the paper. So I really did enjoy the writing workshop. However, I'm just finding that with my daughter just having a natural knack for writing, doing things like uh, her daily writing journal, um, her actually typing up stories on the computer, she's actually getting that formal writing in without needing like that formal curriculum. One thing that we have done is that some of her creative writing, I will print it off after she's typed it and we go over the errors she has made as far as punctuation and run on sentences and commas and different things that she has learned within her uh, grammar. We have been uh, just doing it that way. And I'm finding by giving her this writing workshop, I'm actually giving her just busy work because she is naturally uh, getting her writing in in various subjects. My daughter actually completed a really big project this first semester. She did a, a African mammals project where she had to research six African mammals. She had to find credible sources. She had to uh, be able to turn in uh, information into her own words. Uh, she had to, uh, it was a lot of things she had to do with that uh, writing project. And I really found that by her doing something outside of a formal curriculum, she actually was able to learn so much more with writing. So for this next semester, I'm going to do the same thing for her writing. I am going to continue to allow her to do her daily writing. I think this uh, semester I may give her like some writing prompts um, and she will continue to write in different areas like science and I definitely know she will continue to write within history. So that is what we're going to do for writing as far as next semester. Like I said, I just think because she is more of a natural writer, I can just take various places where she has written in and work on that writing instruction instead of giving her uh, some type of separate curriculum. However, I will go ahead and let you guys know is that I think next year is gonna be my last year giving her formal grammar instructions. And I think from then, from there moving forward, because she does like writing so much, I will just have her just do writing for English uh, as she gets into middle school. So you guys, let's go ahead and get on into science. So for science, we actually did God's Design for Life World of Animals. And you guys, I absolutely love this by Masterbooks. These lessons in this science book was like so short, so simple, to the point, I really, really enjoyed it. I actually paired it with a really cute interactive science notebook that um, I had my daughter do. Instead of using the teacher guide with the worksheets, I just took the questions from the teacher guide and we've been making a creative interactive science uh, composition and she's been enjoying that. But you guys, these lessons, they're short, they're sweet. I love the comprehension check at the end. It really uh, it really gets uh, Brielle thinking and it just really uh, gave me the, uh, I guess, encouragement that she is comprehending. Her reading comprehension skills are good. She was able to answer the questions. And if she didn't know the question, I would have her go back through the text 
and find the answer to the question. And it just really worked on those reading comprehension skills as well. Um, the lessons, the way that they word it, it just pulls you into the stories. And um, this is really, really good. I cannot wait for us to start the human body next. We have a few more um, lessons left in the world of animals, but you guys, this right here is a keeper. I think we wanna go ahead and continue with the rest of the Masterbook series. Uh, to some people, one thing I will say a con might be is some people might feel like you're just reading a text and that's it. They do have some activities, but it's not like heavily activity and experiment based. So if that's something that you're looking for, this may not be for you, but if you just want a short, simple lesson, maybe a few activities sprinkled in here and there, this science curriculum is definitely for you. Now, as far as science goes, we also did a few lessons of the mammal science unit from The Good and the Beautiful. You guys, I like this, but my only con about this is that every single lesson had some type of activity that I had to cut, get prepped, get prepared. And I found that a lot of times when it came to do science, I would just put it off just because I didn't wanna have to do the extra work that was required from the good and the beautiful science. Now I will say the good and the beautiful science, I mean, it is good, it's nice, um, it's really hands-on based. It will have an experiment every single lesson. You will have something that you have to cut, you have to glue, some type of experiment you're gonna do every single lesson. So you as the mom, if you have the stamina to do that every single time it comes time for science, if you don't have like younger kids like me, uh, where you don't have to really worry about that, you really have like uh, all school age kids, this science curriculum may be uh, good for you. However, I personally find that now in the season of life that I'm in, I uh, am not picking this up as much <laughs> just because I know the amount of effort that it's gonna require of me. Um, again, this is these science units, they are good. I like the way the information is presented. One con that I will have with this is that I don't like that this science curriculum doesn't have any type of, uh, I guess, reinforcement, any type of knowledge checks, any type of like comprehension questions at the end. You're just presenting the information to your kid and that's it. If that's something that's not important to you, I think you wouldn't mind this. But as far as me, when we did the God's Design for Life, because this was my second um, science curriculum trying, I actually used the Good and the Beautiful Science units for our first year of homeschooling. So when I was able to try a science unit that had like those comprehension checks and, and um, had those things, I realized that that was something that was important to me that the Good and the Beautiful Science units don't have. So um, yeah. And another thing too I also liked about Masterbooks is that they do have like a final exam at the end. So if you do wanna give your kid like a quiz or a test, they do have that if that's important to you. As far as me, it is important for me to see and attest my daughter's knowledge just because in the state of Georgia, I do have to give my daughter standardized tests every three years. And I just definitely want to make sure when that standardized testing time comes that um, I can really see what information my daughter grasps and what information she um, has retained. With this, however, I can't see that unless I make up my own tests and quizzes to go with it. So that was something that was important to me. So. Uh, these science units, I mean, they are great if you are looking for just all the time doing some type of experiment, hands-on learning, then these will be for you. But if you're like me, you just need a short, simple, sweet science lesson, then I would definitely go with Masterbook. Now, as far as history, you guys, we have definitely done more of a geography-based history this school year. We have done the Amazing Africa unit by the Heritage Mom blog, and you guys, we definitely have been enjoying this Amazing Africa unit. This is just taking us through each country. We are reading picture books. We are uh, learning more about each and every country. After we learn about each country, I have my daughter color a flag, and she writes a paragraph about what she learned about the country. Some of these uh, in this unit, some of the countries have videos that we are watching to go along with it. And it's really been amazing. It's really uh, given my daughter a chance to experience another country. And she has definitely been loving this. I wanted to be finished with this amazing Africa by the end of this semester. However, you guys, we have about eight more weeks left of this. So we're actually not gonna be finished with this until the end of February, which honestly, I don't really mind now 
around because we are going to get a chance to finish this during Black History Month, which is going to be kind of like amazing. So um, yeah, so we will have this finished by the end of February. And then after that, I do have the Beautiful Feet Early American um, or is it Early American Intermediate History. I already have that. It's up here in my um, curriculum uh, hall, my curriculum storage back here. So I do have that ready to go for us to start American history if we will start it. However, I'm kind of contemplating. I really don't know if we are going to start American history this year or if we're just going to wait until the fifth grade. Um, honestly, we're just going to kind of see. Uh, as far as the Amazing Africa goes, I do have my daughter do like some geography uh, workbook lessons. We have a maps and geography workbook book that I have that we go through and she does do like some geography as well so like I said this year has definitely been more so a heavy geography year for us than actual history so I'm not too sure like I said if we will start American history in March or if we'll just save it for August so we will kind of like just go from there so the last piece of curriculum that I'm going to show you guys is actually art. We actually have started this living art lessons from Masterbooks and you guys this is amazing. If you don't know where to go, where to start for art, this is really the way to go. I really love how it talks about the different elements of art. It really pulls the kids in. I'm not too sure about master books, but they have a way of their words in their text and it's not boring and it's exciting for the kids and it really grabs them in. I really like the um, workbook that goes along with this. Now, if you don't wanna buy the extra workbook that goes along with this, you don't have to because inside up here it has like all of the instructions for the art project so I'm really excited to continue with this I definitely know we're not going to finish this full curriculum this year which honestly in my opinion is great because I can continue art with my daughter for next year so if you're looking for art simple sweet doesn't require much of you <laughs> if you guys are catching a trend with me that's definitely it this right here is definitely for you so I really have been enjoying these living art lessons um let me see. Oh yeah, you guys, as far as other electives, you guys, my daughter has done piano through Hoffman Academy. She's doing really, really great. I believe my daughter is in unit four of the Hoffman Academy. So she is learning how to play the piano. So that is another elective that she's doing. And the last elective that we do is typing.com. My daughter is doing great with it. She's actually on the advanced level of typing.com. She finished the beginner and the intermediate units in that um, typing.com if you guys don't know typing.com is a free typing curriculum online it's interactive it has the fun games I think it really gets the kids ready and excited for typing they do have ads on it however I find the ads don't really bother my daughter she just tinkers away at it um, I will say my daughter's little typing is getting fast when she is doing like her creative writing her story writing her little, the little keys is making noise and I'm like okay she really has learned a lot from that typing program so it definitely has been amazing so you guys that's everything that is all of the curriculum <laughs> that we have done this school year so you guys even though we did have a rocky start starting off our school year I will say that um, it has been successful we have found what works for us finally and uh, I feel like we are just trucking along and I'm so excited um, I'm excited for next semester I know we can do it I know we can end this year strong so you guys I really hope today's video was helpful to any of you guys and I, I really hope that getting a glimpse of these curriculums and seeing what worked and what didn't work for us could possibly help you guys as always you guys I look forward to seeing everybody next year <laughs> 20 2022 will be everyone's year so as always you guys please don't forget to comment like and subscribe i hope you guys all have a great new year bye